Scientists and sea biologists say that the mass of squids on the planet exceeds the mass of all people. Keep this fact in your mind while you listen to the story of the Kraken. So no one knows exactly what this giant sea monster looks like. But according to the stories of old fishers and taverns, the records of travelers and legends, the Kraken looks like a giant squid. If so, it has the squid's anatomical properties and reproductive functions. And this is a big problem for us. A female squid can lay anywhere from three to 100,000 eggs. Even if most of them don't survive, it's still a lot. Many of these creatures live in the ocean's dark depths that people haven't yet fully explored, and it seems we'll know more about squid soon. The metabolism of these creatures is accelerating thanks to the increase in water temperature, and this causes population growth. Scientists call squids the weeds of the seas because of their rapid reproduction. They can potentially exceed the population of all fish and mammals. Perhaps there will be so many of them soon that they won't have enough food on the ocean floor. They will begin to migrate closer to the surface. Small squid and monstrous giant ones. There may be a kraken among them, or a few, or even tens, hundreds of thousands. And if this happens, humanity and all animals on Earth will face a huge problem. As the kings of nature, people can easily invent poison to destroy krakens. But how to spread this poison? Giant squids, along with ordinary fish, dolphins, whales, seaweed, and phytoplankton, will suffer if it gets into the water. More than half of the world's oxygen is produced by the ocean. And if people spread this poison in the water, they'll risk disrupting the entire planet's ecosystem. The ocean will become lifeless. So. People have to forget about poisoning the water. For a while, we will be helpless against the squid apocalypse. Let's say a couple of billion squids rise to the surface. A couple million of them are krakens. The first thing these monsters will want to do is get food. Lunch for them can be both shoals of fish and massive whales. And no one can stop them. Even if megalodons existed, they wouldn't be able to resist the giant tentacles and strong beaks of krakens. The fish population in the ocean has declined. This means that people can't go fishing anymore. We can catch fish in lakes, rivers, and seas, but it's not enough. Seafood has become very expensive all over the world. A fish tank with goldfish is a luxury. Of course, humans learn to catch giant squids, which solves the problem of hunger in some areas. The profession of a squid catcher is becoming prestigious all over the world. This kind of fishing is dangerous and requires a lot of strength and courage. The second problem is sea travel. Every day, people transport millions of tons of cargo across the ocean. Huge businesses and economies of entire countries work thanks to such transportation. But now, krakens swim close to the surface and make any voyage dangerous. One monster can quickly destroy a small ship. Ten or twenty krakens are able to sink a giant cargo vessel. This leads to a reduction in logistics chains. Communication between continents is now maintained by air. The number of flights is increasing. Plane tickets are rising in price. Travel is becoming too expensive. This leads to a reduction in the number of tourists in some countries, which disrupts their economies. There are more krakens and less food. Resting on a beach also becomes dangerous. Aggressive, hungry giant squids can come ashore to catch sunbathers. All shores are fenced. Swimming is forbidden. Of course, scientists invent some things to fight squids. Sound barriers, for example. Every ship is now equipped with a device that launches powerful ultrasonic waves into the water. They scare away all the fish and clear the way for boats. In the beginning, it helps, but then Kraken stop fearing it. Ultrasound only angers them. They pounce on ships and break sound barriers. Another thing that scares them away is sunlight. For millions of years, Krakens have been living on the dark ocean floor. Their eyes are used to the darkness, so they fear the bright light. During sunny weather, ships move freely. But as soon as the sun goes below the horizon or clouds obscure it, sea monsters come out of the ocean depths. It doesn't help much because it's impossible to sail across any ocean within a single sunny day. In addition, there is no guarantee that you won't get caught in a storm when the sun is hidden behind the clouds. That's why people invent powerful floodlights. They direct their beams at monsters' heads and drive them into the dark depths. Such projectors are expensive because they require a lot of energy. Only some ships can afford such a device. And while people seek more effective ways to fight krakens, squids multiply. And this becomes the solution to the problem. The ocean is running out of fish. Food is not available on land. Like a snake devouring its tail, squids start fighting with one another. 
The water foams, and squids cling to each other with tentacles. Big krakens defeat smaller monsters. Their population is shrinking. A few giant squids the size of the Eiffel Tower survive after long battles. And when the fight is over, little squids come into play. Billions of cephalopods pounce on giant krakens. They are like flies clinging from all sides. Giant monsters can't fight them. Great, the problem with voyages is solved. Large ships can set sail, but it's still dangerous for people to swim in the sea since tiny monsters are still hungry. Logistics chains have been restored, but fish are still scarce in the ocean. Squids, like parasites, don't allow other creatures to dominate. And here, scientists come to help fish. Let's go back to our reality for a second. There's such a thing as a gene drive. It's a substance that changes the genetic code of living creatures. For example, scientists have implemented a gene drive in mosquitoes that cause malaria. Biologists changed the genome of these insects, so some female mosquitoes became infertile. Then these females spread the gene throughout the mosquito colony. As a result, more insects that couldn't conceive appeared. They continued to spread the gene, and this went on until the population reduced significantly. A gene drive is a low-cost way to get rid of invasive species of insects or rodents. Thus, scientists can control the population of entire species. But such actions can be dangerous. If some animal disappears, it can disrupt the whole ecosystem and lead to the disappearance of other animals. In the case of mosquitoes, nature didn't suffer much. So scientists use a gene drive against squid. But why couldn't they do it from the very beginning? Ordinary squids didn't pose a threat, and their average life expectancy is from three to five years. If scientists had launched a gene drive, then in seven years, all small squids would have disappeared. But it wouldn't have worked with krakens. According to myths and legends, one such monster can live for several hundred years. Now when small squids have solved the problem with large ones, a gene drive comes into play. It takes several years to get rid of the squid. The ocean ecosystem begins to recover. People take fish and marine mammals from seas and rivers and transfer them to the ocean. The population of whales, sharks, octopuses, salmon, and hundreds of thousands of other species is growing. But then another threat awakens in the depths of the ocean. It turns out that when squids and krakens lived on the ocean floor, they didn't let even more terrible monsters move to the surface. Now that all arthropods have disappeared, new monsters are breaking free. First, marine earthquakes begin. But then, scientists discover that it's not the seabed shaking. Those are the backs of giant crabs. Hundreds of thousands of armored monsters with claws are rising to the surface. And this time, they can come ashore. Now, get this. Octopuses are visitors from outer space. Here's how this would have happened. Ice-kept eggs of octopuses stuck in spatial bodies crashed into Earth. Then these guys would have mixed together with a pre-existing set of genetic information available on our planet. And presto, octopuses were born. Well, it may be a long stretch to justify that the highly intelligent octopuses are extraterrestrial beings. But the idea is based on a theory that has been around since ancient Greece, something known as panspermia. Now, panspermia is a hypothesis that says life exists all around the universe, not only in planets. So things such as space dust, asteroids, and even spacecraft have their share of life glued to them. And when they travel across the galaxy, life is disseminated. This strand of thought has been polemic since it goes against the idea that all life originated right here on our planet. But as much as this new octopus theory might be refreshing, it doesn't contribute too substantially to the search for life on other planets. It's just too hypothetical. Now, octopuses are in fact incredibly old. The oldest known fossil belongs to an animal that lived almost 300 million years ago. FYI, this is before our dinosaur buddies roamed the Earth. Wait, there's more! Octopus arms have a mind of their own. That's because two-thirds of their neurons lie in their arms, not in their heads. This means that their arms can problem-solve how to open a shellfish, while their owner is worried about other stuff entirely. Talk about ninja-level multitasking. Oh, and like other animals, such as chimpanzees and dolphins, octopuses have proven to be good at maneuvering tools, like picking up old shells and using them as a temporary home. 
Now, of course, the most intelligent animals on our planet are humans, according to humans. But we don't seem to give pigs enough credit. Pigs are so smart they can play video games. No, not Minecraft. But in a recent academic study, scientists had four pigs play a joystick game. They had to manipulate the stick so that the moving ball would hit the wall and then they would get a treat. All four pigs did great in the test, which was surprising even to the scientists. Now, pigeons also aced an impressive test. They were trained to differentiate a Picasso painting from a Monet one, which they had no trouble learning. Then, they were able to apply this knowledge, identifying works of art they had not previously seen, meaning they really understood the difference between each painter. Poor things are always seen as a nuisance. Now, if we placed kangaroos in an animal's most amazing ability contest, they'd win! It's mainly because they break the four-legged rule. A special species of kangaroo, the red kangaroo, uses its tail to help propel it forward. Now, visually, it has four limbs, but in practice, it uses five. They're biologically built to use their tail as a fifth limb, since it's packed with articulated vertebrae and thick muscles. Of course, it had to be an Australian animal. Okay, jokes aside, Australia is home to a variety of unique animals, like the most venomous snake in the world. This not-so-cute reptile is known as the inland taipan, and its venom is enough to take down a hundred humans. And still, on the topic of dangerous animals, the island is also home to one of the world's most venomous spiders, the funnel web spider, which can be found not too far away from downtown Sydney. Yikes! <laughs> The Little Mermaid may have shown us that life is good under the sea. But she didn't mention anything about the bizarre ways of the anglerfish. Anglerfish are those special types of fish that have a huge whip nose connected to the front part of their bodies. They look like they're forever holding a lantern in front of them. Except that the little lantern they carry is a type of bioluminescence. And it's far from romantic, as anglerfish use it to lure smaller fish in as their meals. It was back in 1999 that scientists discovered that these little guys spend most of their lives upside down. They had never seen anything like that. Hovering above the Pacific Ocean floor at a depth of around 16,400 feet, where light almost doesn't even reach, there they were. They do this because since they live so close to the seafloor, their built-in lantern illuminates the ground in search of food. They might be weird, but they're also pretty clever. Recently, scientists have discovered a species of animal that has neither a brain nor a head and is pretty smart. Meet the brittle star. This five-armed creature is a bundle of nerves, and it has proved itself to be super clever. In a recent experiment, scientists would dim the light while they fed brittle stars their favorite treat, yummy shrimps. After 10 months of conditioning, these babies would creep out of hiding as soon as the scientists turned off the light in the room they were in. Surely they were expecting to enjoy a delicious meal. Now, we really shouldn't judge a brain by its size, or lack of brain in this case. There's something known as the orange cat behavior, and apparently it's not just a meme. So far, scientists have been able to understand that coat color is connected to a feline's gender. And since orange is an X chromosome, orange cats are usually males, like Garfield. The so-called orange cat behavior describes ginger cats as agents of chaos. Again, pretty much like Garfield. However, there haven't been any conclusive studies on whether coat color and cat behavior are truly linked. In terms of vision, mantis shrimps probably have the most psychedelic vision out of all animals. These funny-looking creatures have a whopping 16 varieties of photoreceptors, with five of them reserved for the ultraviolet or UV spectrum. Ultraviolet rays are really short wavelengths, which are invisible to humans. The thing science still doesn't understand is how exactly these mantis shrimp view the world around them. Sure, they can perceive a bunch of colors, but they can't necessarily distinguish all of these colors among themselves. It can be that they just see a lot of really vivid, really blurry colors. But we haven't figured out a way to check that out. Now, to say sloths are cute is an understatement. They may be one of the friendliest animals in the jungle, but there's more. If you look closely at their fur coat, 
you'll notice hints of green. These greeneries are actually tiny little algae that grow alongside sloths. They help sloths to camouflage better in the jungle, but they also nurture them. The little cracks inside a sloth's fur create the perfect environment for algae reproduction, and scientists have found species of algae that don't exist anywhere else in the world. They do get by with a little help from their friends. Deep within the Sahara Desert, you'll find a little creature known as the fennec fox. This huge-eared animal adapted perfectly to survive in its hostile environment. The huge ears help them to dissipate the unbearable heat of the desert, as well as help them to hunt for underground prey. Now meet this guy. Unlike what its name might suggest, the red panda is closer to a raccoon than it is to a giant panda. You'll find a lot of these cat-sized creatures in the Himalayan region, hopping from tree to tree and bundled together trying to keep warm in the harsh weather. They're gentle and friendly, like their big panda cousins, and occasionally enjoy eating some bamboo sticks. And then there are bees. Compared to humans, bees' brains are the size of pinheads, yet they are capable of astounding things. Let's say a bee is running low on energy after a long search flight. This bee desperately needs a drop of honey in order to continue flying. But smartly enough, she doesn't need to go back to the hive to recharge. She can ask a fellow beehive mate for a drop of honey directly from this other bee's stomach and continue flying. This type of decentralized system allows them to build highly effective societies, one that bees don't need to push to the queues in front of the honey cells, for example. Hey, just kidding. The deeper you go, the creepier they get. You're about to travel to the darkest ocean depths and check whether this claim is true. Are the creatures living there as scary as people think? You go 120 feet down underwater. Pay close attention to the bottom under your flippers. Oh my, what's that terrifying face half hidden in the sand? That's the Northern Stargazer. You can meet this fish in the eastern United States. It buries itself in the sand until unsuspecting prey gets near. Then, the nightmarish creature electrically shocks the poor animal and dines on it. You are moving deeper, to 240 feet under the surface. That's where you spot a colorful, puffy creature, no more than one foot long. It's the sarcastic fringe head. At first, the fish seems to be harmless. Ha! Huh. Only unless it's provoked. When this animal is agitated, it opens its huge, huge mouth to fend off predators. This defense tactic is a sight to behold, both surprising and frightening. Luckily, the fish is no threat to people whatsoever. The creature you see next can comfortably live in shallow waters, but you meet it at a depth of 900 feet. You don't even need to wonder why the animal's called the Game of Thrones Brittle Star. Unlike starfish that slowly crawl across the seabed, this creature moves fast. It wriggles its long, flexible arms to get from point A to point B. Its body is protected by a hard calcium carbonate shell. Also called snake stars, these creatures are tiny and easily fit in nooks, cracks, and small crevices in rocks. At a much greater depth of 2,000 feet, you come across the giant squid. For a long time, it was thought to be a creature from legends rather than a real animal. The giant squid was first caught on camera in 2001, and it's exactly as big as its name implies. The creature's eyeballs are the size of soccer balls, and the squid itself can weigh up to 600 pounds. Almost 3,000 feet below the surface, you get spooked by another creepy-looking animal. It's somewhat red and rather small, no longer than one foot long. As you approach the creature, it looks rather docile, or maybe just indifferent. The vampire squid, that's the animal's name, looks like an umbrella with tentacles. It doesn't even produce ink, so you leave it alone. Soon after that, at a depth of 3,200 feet, you meet the cookie cutter shark. This creature is a parasite. It attaches itself to big fishes, dolphins, whales, and sometimes even people. Then, using its neatly arranged serrated teeth, it gouges out cookie-sized pieces of meat. This nasty glowing animal doesn't grow larger than 20 inches and lives in the ocean twilight zone. 
At a depth of 3,300 feet, the light becomes a rare and valuable thing. The animals living that far away from the surface have to evolve unusual features to survive. That's how the barrel eye fish ended up with a transparent head and two super sensitive barrel shaped eyes. Right now, pretty much like always, they're pointed upward, allowing the fish to see potential prey and you. Almost 4,000 feet below the surface, you see something droopy and saggy. The blobfish doesn't have a skeleton or any muscle. Its jelly-like flesh lets the creature survive incredible water pressure. Despite its appearance, the blobfish is an ambush predator. It usually lies very still on the bottom, waiting for unsuspecting prey to swim by. You go a bit deeper and spot a creature that looks particularly ghastly. The goblin shark senses prey with its snout. The creature's terrifying jaws are attached to elastic ligaments. When some animal comes too close, the shark catapults its mouth forward to catch it. If your mouth could do the same, you would be able to eat things dangling seven inches away from your face. Even deeper than that, at 5,000 feet, you notice another member of the shark family. The frilled shark looks like an overgrown eel, but its gills are lined with red fringe at the edges, hence the name. The creature's horrifying mouth has 25 rows of razor-sharp backward-facing teeth, 300 in total. The shark prefers to hover in the water, waiting for its prey to come closer. Then, it charges at it like a snake. Suddenly, you see something glow brightly like an electric bulb. But after coming closer, you recoil in horror. The creature looks like an upgraded eel equipped with oversized teeth. That's the deep sea dragonfish that can live at a depth of 6,000 feet. Chemical processes going on inside the fish's body produce an eerie red glow. This glow is used to communicate with other fish. At the same depth, you meet another deep sea inhabitant. Its most prominent feature is its huge mouth. Thanks to it, the gulper eel can swallow its prey whole. Its stomach can expand to a terrifying size when it needs to fit something large. At a depth of 6,600 feet, you come across an angry looking creature with a fishing rod over its head. It's the deep sea anglerfish. The animal has an unusual dorsal spine, even though it's worn only by females. It protrudes above their mouth and has a lure on its tip, some luminous flesh that baits prey. The anglerfish has such a big mouth and its body is so pliable that it can swallow animals twice its own size. You're 7,000 feet down when you see another fish that's glowing in the dark. The black dragonfish is a sly creature. It has its light-producing organs arranged along its belly. The spooky creature also has gleaming flashlights next to its eyes. They help the animal find prey and attract potential mates. At the same depth, you also spot an enormous pill bug. But unlike the critter you can find in your garden, this one is at least 20 inches long. That's the giant isopod, and it is, indeed, related to the roly-poly, as well as crabs and shrimps. These creatures may look somewhat scary, but they're harmless. They feast on other deep-sea animals only after those have passed away. At a depth of 13,000 feet, you notice the ocean floor has become a bit… fluffy? That's because it's covered with zombie worms. These creatures rarely grow to be more than two inches long. And still, they can break down fairly large animals, so strong the acid they produce is. The worm's feathery appearance makes them look like plants. But the truth is, these creatures munch on rock-hard bones of the world's largest animals, such as whales. The grideye fish almost scares you out of your mind soon after that. This creature has a pair of large greenish oval plates on the top of its head and no eyes whatsoever. Experts believe that these bony membranes detect light coming from predators, saving the fish's life. You're now three miles down below the surface, and that's where you spot something bizarre on the bottom. It's definitely a fish, but it's standing on the ocean floor on three long, rigid legs. Ah, it's the tripod fish. Curious rather than scary. This creature has adapted to the almost complete darkness by giving up on its vision. It has to rely on vibration and touch to sense prey. And then, 
the fish uses its fins as hands to transport food directly into its mouth. You don't have time to go any deeper before you spot the faceless fish. This slightly off-putting creature has no eyes, and its mouth, smiling a Mona Lisa smile, is underneath its body. For the first time, the faceless cusk, which is the creature's official name, was seen more than a century ago. The next time it happened was only in 2017. Once you've reached a depth of six miles below the surface, you see deep sea cucumbers. These bizarre creatures are much bigger than their shallow water relatives. They spend most of their time on the sea floor. But if they need to escape predators, they are able to swim away. Deep sea cucumbers have bright purplish coloring, tiny feet, and tentacles that surround their mouths. Hmm, cute. The question is, why do these deep sea creatures look so scary? Life is very different there, at the bottom. Tremendous water pressure, a lack of food, and constant darkness. You have to adapt to survive in such extreme conditions. Look at this pretty creature. It looks cute and totally harmless. But you should know that appearances are deceptive, and the blue-ringed octopus is an extremely venomous species of octopus. In fact, they are one of the world's most venomous marine animals. These creatures are found in tide pools and coral reefs. Despite their small size, a mere 5 to 8 inches, they're very dangerous to humans if provoked. Their venom contains a powerful neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin. When the animal feels threatened, its first instinct is to flee. But if the threat persists, for example, if you don't give up the idea of picking the octopus up, it will go into a defensive stance and display its blue rings. If the octopus is cornered and touched, it may bite its attacker, and it can end very, very badly. Tetrodotoxin causes severe consequences and sometimes results in total body paralysis. When the victim is fully aware of the surroundings but unable to move, the victim remains conscious and alert, but because of the paralysis, there's no way of signaling for help or indicating distress. Interestingly, in its chilling mode, the blue-ringed octopus looks brown or even pale, but once it feels endangered, it switches on its psychedelic pattern. Such a response is called aposomatic behavior. In simple words, it's when an animal flashes bright colors warning others that, should they take a bite, they won't live to tell the tale. Of course, the blue-ringed octopus isn't the only dangerous animal that looks harmless out there. For example, look at this creature. This animal looks super cute, fluffy and soft looking. The desire to touch it is irresistible. Watch out. The sting of the hairy caterpillar can pack a serious punch. It's called the puss moth caterpillar or asp. Hidden among that luxurious fur, there are venom spines equipped with stinging cells like jellyfish. People react very differently to caterpillar toxins. Some may develop more severe reactions than others. Plus, how bad the consequences are also depends on the thickness of the skin in the affected area. In most cases, the unpleasant sensations and rash go away in a few hours or sometimes days. The next animal on our list is the poison dart frog. There are more than 170 species of these frogs, and funnily enough, not all of them are actually poisonous, those which are secret, extremely dangerous toxins through their skin. On the bright side, the frogs never use these toxins for hunting or attacking. They only have them for self-defense. Experts aren't sure, but they suppose that the frog's ability to produce these toxins might come from a diet rich in toxin-containing animals, for example, centipedes or ants. Indigenous peoples in Central and South America have been known to rub their arrows and darts on the frogs in order to give them a poison tip. The main thing you need to keep in mind, if you touch a poison dart frog, seek assistance immediately. Especially if you've come across the golden poison dart frog, it's the most toxic one. The flamboyant cuttlefish is the only known venomous cuttlefish species. This creature has incredibly poisonous muscle tissue, despite its tiny, two to three inches at most frame. Watch out for a dark brown underwater animal with two tentacles and eight arms. It's also likely to have purple and yellow around its arms. Anyway, your best bet is to avoid biting into one of these intriguing creatures, and you'll most likely be safe. Predatory cone snails are very slow animals. This is the main reason why they have no means to capture their prey mechanically. I mean, they can't really grasp another animal or bite it. Instead, the cone snail has evolved potent venom that helps it survive. Probably the coolest thing about these creatures is that among almost 1,000 species, 
there's no overlap in the toxins produced by each of them. Even though cone snails don't have fangs, they have a venom-covered harpoon they use to sting their prey. There's a tube-like structure at the end of a venom bulb, and a modified tooth can shoot out of the tube at a mind-boggling speed of 400 miles per hour. So being slowpokes doesn't actually bother cone snails. And since the venom is unique to certain species, some of them can deliver a minor sting, while others might cause serious harm to your health. For example, this reef-dwelling little fella unleashes a harpoon-like tooth to sting its prey, and there is no known cure for its venom. When you think of puffer fish, you probably imagine a bloated-looking creature with impressive 360-degree quills. But beneath those funny spikes, there is a vicious creature. And the most dangerous part of this creature is its poison, which is considered to be one of, if not the, most dangerous and potent in the world. The good news is that you won't get poisoned unless you eat the fish. So maybe better stick to the California roll. Now look at this insect and try to never approach it. It's the Japanese giant hornet. This monstrously sized creature, which can grow to be almost two inches long, is known to be highly aggressive. Its impressive stinger packs enough venom to make the sting very, and I mean it, painful. Some people don't survive being stung by this insect. Even though the venom isn't the most potent, the large size of the creature makes the dose too big. And if it's not one but several hornets attacking you, well, the consequences are likely to be dramatic. The giant hornet isn't necessarily unfriendly toward people or other animals, but it will sting if you provoke it. This truly beautiful bright blue creature is called the Blue Sea Dragon. Despite such an imposing name, the critter is actually tiny, usually no bigger than a grape. You may find it on the beach or floating beside you in the water. Now, you need to remember one thing. However pretty this little slug may look, never ever touch it. Despite their tiny size, their sting can pack a punch, all because of their diet. Their favorite dish is the Portuguese Man of War, a jellyfish that has enough venom to paralyze small fish and crustaceans. The blue dragons first use mucus to neutralize the jellyfish's infamous stinging cells, and then they steal these cells from the Man of War's tentacles and store and concentrate them within their own tissues. Then they release these stinging cells on contact, which makes their own sting even more powerful, even worse than that of the Man of War's itself. These awesome creatures are also extremely sneaky. Even though their appearance is bright, to say the least, they're well-known masters of disguise. You see, that vibrant blue coloring is actually on their bellies. And when they float on their backs, they simply blend with the water. As for their backs, they're gray to camouflage these animals on the sea surface. The Arukanji jellyfish, found in Australia, looks tiny and totally innocent. But appearances are deceitful and this baby the size of a human thumbnail is actually extremely dangerous. During stinger season, which lasts from November to May, tons of beaches get closed because of these itsy bitsy creatures. What makes the jellyfish particularly dangerous is their miniature size. People simply fail to notice them while swimming. The infamous box jellyfish, named for its cubic body shape, lives in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Stay away if you spot a creature with a squarish bell and long, dangling tentacles. And even if you only see a single tentacle without the jellyfish attached to it, don't come close or touch it. The box jellyfish can grow up to 10 feet, and each of its tentacles has about 500,000 microscopic harpoons to inject venom. Unlike other jellyfish, box jellyfish are hunters. They can latch onto you by wrapping their slender tentacles around your limb or body. With how dangerous their venom is, it won't be a pleasant experience. Wanna high five a sea creature? Well, put your flipper, I mean hand up, for the Tasmanian red hand fish. This fish doesn't swim like a fish. It walks. It uses its flipper-like hands to stroll around on the ocean floor. These bottom walkers are disturbed by swimmers and boats a lot. Some people even want to take them home as pets. I think it's better to just give them a wave and swim on by. The Vampire Squid its species name is Vampirotuthis infernalis, which translates to Vampire Squid from Hell. Oh yes, this vampire squid means to terrify everyone with its name, its dark red color, its spikes at the bottom, and the scary fact that it can basically turn itself inside out. The vampire squid loves putting on a good show, but it's as harmless as a kitten is to humans. It's as if Dracula scared the pants off you, but he didn't have blood-sucking fangs. 
the vampire squid feeds on food particles from plants and animal matter floating near the ocean's surface. Since they're not predators, they need good defensive strategies, and their vampiric look is designed to ward off large creatures who want to eat them. Turning themselves inside out is a defensive mechanism since the spiky areas in the inner skin are more intimidating. They also shoot out a substance that does not have color, but is packed with bioluminescent particles to distract predators. The Vaquita Going out on a boat off the coast of Mexico sounds like the perfect vacation. The sun, the blue water, the most endangered sea creature. Wait, what? The vaquita isn't dangerous, but don't expect it to stick around to say hello or sign any autographs. It's incredibly shy. This little cow, that's what it means in Spanish, is one tiny sea mammal. With those black markings around its eyes, it looks more like a sea panda to me. Seeing one should make you feel very special. They're on the brink of extinction, mostly because they get caught by accident in fishing nets. It's estimated that there's only 10 left in the wild. The Blue Dragon This little creature looks like something out of a kid's fantasy movie. It's called the Blue Glaucus, casually referred to as the Blue Dragon or Blue Angel. It can be found in many places, the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. It's kind of a mollusk and it only grows to be about an inch long. What you think is the back is actually the mollusk's bright underbelly. It regularly floats on its back so that its blue colors help it camouflage with the water's waves. The blue dragon isn't just pretty, it's also smart. It usually feasts on Portuguese man wars also known as Fisalia fisalis. The blue dragon stores their stinging cells for later use, in essence, stealing their defensive mechanisms. When the blue dragon is threatened, it releases those stinging cells it's stored, directing them at an enemy to sting them with more power than the Portuguese man o war would have been capable of. As they can store a huge amount of stinging cells, they can be a threat to humans. So, if you find one, don't pick it up. It's best to admire it from a distance. The Barrel Eye Fish If you ever wanted to have Superman's X-ray vision, Looking at the barrel eye fish will make you feel like you gained that superpower at some point in your life without even realizing it. The barrel eye has a transparent head, so you can see how their eyes and brain look inside. This magnificent creature lives in the deep sea. This is the lowest level of the ocean, where strange creatures roam in near freezing temperatures and constant darkness. They're exposed to water's pressure that's almost 1,000 times that of the surface. If the idea of the deep sea sends a shiver down your spine, stay tuned to learn about another of its creatures later on. The barrel eye fish can be found in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. You might be wondering, why oh why would a fish have a see-through head? And that would be a fair question. Since the species was discovered in 1939, it was believed that the fish's eyes were set to see straight ahead and couldn't move. So it was assumed that they had tunnel vision. Scientists Bruce Robinson and Kim Reisenbickler from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute recently discovered that the fish can move its eyes vertically to see through the top of its translucent head, thus noticing if there are predators or a prey nearby. The transparent head also allows more light to enter so they can detect prey better. It's believed that the barrel eye fish eats jellyfish and small fish species. If you dive in the ocean at night, you might be lucky enough to see how orange ball coralomorph blooms in the dark. But make sure to be quick because as soon as you turn on your flashlight to take a good look, it will retract its tubes back into itself. The Megalodon The whale shark isn't the biggest shark known to humans. If the entire shark species were a kingdom, the prehistoric Megalodon would be the ruler of the sea. Megalodon roamed the ocean a long time ago. Oh, about 15.9 to 2.6 million years back between the early Miocene and late Pliocene eras. While they've long been extinct, people are still amazed to learn about these gigantic sea beasts. Megalodon could reach anywhere between 45 feet to 60 feet in length with jaws more than 6 feet wide. A fossil of a tooth that once belonged to a Megalodon measured at 7 inches. Needless to say, I'm pretty stoked that these guys have long been extinct but there's still some adventurers out there hoping to meet this monster one day. The Dumbo Octopus This adorable creature, or creepy creature, or however you want to see it, is officially called Grimpoteuthis. More casually, it's referred to as the Dumbo Octopus, named after the Disney character. 
Though Dumbo, the elephant, not the octopus, was teased for his big ears, it's highly unlikely that this adorable octopus gets teased by its water neighbors. They are the deepest living octopuses living in the deep sea, and you know how scary that place is. They're only about 8 inches tall and spend their days hovering just above the seafloor eating snails, worms, and other food they find in the current or near ocean vents. There are nearly 17 species of Dumbo octopus, and they all have differences in height, color, and body parts. If you can't get enough strange animals, you'll be glad to learn that the deep sea has barely been explored by humans. So, keep an eye out. There are bound to be more fascinating animals discovered in the deep in the future. The Sea Angel These creatures might look and sound pretty cute, but their diet is far from sunshine and lollipops. Their favorite food are sea butterflies. They lay mucus traps for them and wait in ambush. The Squat Anemone Shrimp This shrimp is tiny, only 0.5 inches. It's also known as a dancer shrimp because of its peculiar behavior. When agitated, it raises its bottom above its head and does a little dance. Divers also say it readily jumps on their hands and cleans them. The Coconut Crab This guy may look pretty creepy, especially when the sun goes down. Mature coconut crabs are around 3 feet in length. Their preferred foods are coconuts, but they can also hunt down lizards and even large birds. The Slender Snipe Eel Slender Snipe Eel is a slim and long creature that's still a mystery for marine scientists. It's 4 feet long and it has at least 750 bones in its spine, which is much more than any other animal in the world. The Sea Pen Sea Pen is 7 feet long and it has a lot of varieties, but most of them look indeed like a pen or a quill. The similarity is even more striking when the animal has a water-filled bulb that anchors it to the floor. The Persian Carpet Flatworm This creature looks indeed like a carpet, despite being very small by comparison. It's only 4 inches long, able to become both male and female. It doesn't really mate with other flatworms. Rather, it fights them for the right to bear posterity. The Flamingo Tongue Sea Snails Tourists love these extraordinary snails for their pretty colors thinking it's a shell, but in fact, the shell is quite dull and hidden underneath colorful soft tissues. They eat softer, toxic parts of corals and store their toxins to protect themselves. Not much happens in dark, murky ocean depths. It's mostly pretty quiet, with some smaller fish carefully passing by and probably hoping nothing big would grab them on their way. There's also a bigger fella looking for plankton coming through every now and then. Suddenly, a giant beast comes out of nowhere. First, it's just a dark dot in the distance, until it gets closer. Oh, it's a great white shark. You can recognize its firm, dark gray body, white belly, and slanted head. These creatures have special cells in their skin called melanocytes that can make their color change to lighter or darker. This way, a shark can blend in with its surroundings which is a nice ace up its sleeve and the reason why we barely even see one coming by. These predators can grow up to be more than 20 feet and weigh up to 5,000 pounds. Our fierce fella is just passing by looking for some lost fish that might wander around, if it gets lucky, directly into its mouth. But instead, a giant jagged tentacle comes out of nowhere. The Great White barely escaped it, and quickly swam a little further to see what was happening. A giant squid comes out of the depths. Its eyes, as large as dinner plates, are looking straight at the shark, while its soft body is getting closer. A challenging prey, but hey, why not try? Most of the time, these creatures eat shrimp, fish, and other squid, but sometimes they like to really treat themselves, so they go after small whales. A shark will do too. I know you'd expect these creatures to be way smaller. Or that's at least how I comfort myself when I swim a little further from the shore where my feet can't touch the bottom anymore. But they can weigh 600 pounds and be 40 feet long. The Great White Shark is the biggest predatory shark on our planet. Check out its long and sharp teeth. It definitely has the biggest smile down there in the ocean. 
Great whites have around 300 teeth, but they don't use most of them for biting. Instead, they have a special system where new teeth grow all the time because they need to replace the ones that get worn out or lost. And they have a really powerful bite, over 20 times stronger than ours. Considering all that, you might think a great white shark has nothing to be afraid of in the ocean. But looking at its gigantic enemy, we can't be so sure of that anymore. Octopuses only have eight arms. Squids too, but they also have two additional tentacles. They're similar to their arms, but suckers on the arms go along most of their length, while tentacles have suckers only at the ends. This squid has probably hundreds or even thousands of suckers. There are squids without these suction cups, but in that case, they have rotating hooks, or a combination where these two work together. Hooks catch prey, and suckers stick on it so it doesn't get away. Squids have teeth, too. Plus, they have this special part called a radula. It's like a tongue, but with teeth on it. The teeth are tightly packed together and are difficult to remove. When food is passed to the radula, the teeth chew it into small pieces. This is important because squids have sensitive body parts near their throat, so they need pieces of their food to be very small. Their bite may not be as strong as the great white sharks, but it's still quite powerful. For instance, way stronger than a lion's. They also have glands that produce venom and use their beaks and radula to inject the venom into their prey or a creature that's coming after them. Wow, these squids are really equipped better than expected. And they're also way longer than the great white, which gives the squid more room to attack it with its long tentacles from a distance and seize it. Giant squids usually live at depths of 2,950 feet while great whites prefer to stay at depths of about 650 feet. But we'll try to keep the competition fair. Let's say these two meet in a territory where water pressure won't hurt or bother any of these animals. The great white is circling around the squid. It moves a bit faster than the squid. Its swimming speed can reach 25 miles per hour when the animal is submerged, and it also has short bursts of speed when it can move at 35 miles per hour. Giant squids move at around 25 miles per hour. Just for comparison, an average human swims at 2 miles per hour. But with its length, the giant squid has more room to attack the great white shark with its long tentacles from a distance. They can stretch for 33 feet to snatch the prey. And look, it's really trying. But it ain't that easy. Not only is the great white big and fast, but it also has special sensors called the ampullae of Lorenzini. It's a good tool to detect prey and generally stay safe in the ocean. But the squid is definitely no joke. It has activated its special defense mechanism and released thick black ink. The great white is confused. The ink is like a smoke screen, which gives the squid enough time to get away. The shark can't see its opponent anymore. The squid is getting closer, and the poor great white has no idea from which direction. It's time for the final move. Even if the great white manages to catch the squid, the squid can detach parts of its body as a last resort to protect itself. It can lose up to 10 body parts, unlike sharks. These predators can't lose any essential body parts because they won't survive. And look, the squid finally latches onto the shark. Its suction cups and the sharp beak that can pierce its prey make it nearly impossible for the shark to escape. They both disappear into a cloud of ink, the great white shark in one of the rare fights it can lose, and the giant squid ready for new conquests across the ocean. Aren't giant squids perfect for scary stories? In legends, there are often battles between humans and sea monsters. In the past, Norwegian sailors shared stories about sea creatures they encountered during their ocean travels. Over time, these stories grew to include creatures that were like giant islands with arms. And let's not forget about the Kraken. It's a legendary sea monster from Scandinavian stories that looked like an island, which was how it would trick sailors. 
The spooky stories say the beast was using its long tentacles to grab ships and drag them to their doom. And do you remember Jules Verne's novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which describes an encounter between a ship and a giant squid? In real life, giant squids don't eat humans, and they're not particularly interested in going after ships. However, not all the stories about these creatures attacking ships are made up. There are some reports. For example, in the 1930s, something attacked a Norwegian tanker, the Brunswick, three times. And yes, it was indeed the work of a giant squid. Fortunately, the squid couldn't grip onto the ship's steel hull, so it ended up getting caught in the propellers. But even though everything was okay in the end, just looking at this gigantic monster trying to take your ship down to the bottom must have been terrifying. We can laugh at stories about the Kraken until we're out there on our own. In 2003, a giant squid came closer to a French yacht that was participating in a sailing race. It couldn't cause any harm, so it eventually gave up. So, for now, the idea of a giant squid taking down a ship or boat remains a fictional story. Although they're certainly capable of trying. Okay, giant squids are big. But there's another creature from their family of cephalopods that can be even larger. It's called the Colossal Squid. And one that was found weighed 992 pounds. Hundreds of pounds more than the giant squid. 606 pounds. And they can stretch their tentacles for up to 45 feet. One day, all the crabs disappeared. People searched in the seas, oceans, lakes, rivers, rainforests. Not a single live crab, only old shells. Crabs shed or molt several times during their life. Their body keeps growing, but their shell doesn't. So they throw off their old suit and hide. They sit there in silence until their new one grows. But why did every single crab molt on the same day? Where are they hiding? Six months later, Sweet, says an old fisherman, and pulls on his fishing rod. He's out on his boat, catching fish in the Atlantic. The rod hasn't moved for an hour, but now it's latched onto something big. The fisherman pulls the rod with all his strength. Then the joy on his face turns to fear. A giant crab claw shoots out of the water and snips the fishing line. A second claw appears and crushes the boat in half with one pinch. Just then, a cargo ship sails by and scares the monster away. Some sailors pull the fisherman on deck, and he looks down overboard. A huge crab the size of a car is swimming around. Its claw shoots out again and grubs onto the ship's metal hull. The screeching of metal is insane. The captain signals full speed ahead, and with a jolt, the crab's colossal claw comes loose. The ship sails to the shore on a low and mysterious tide. There's a strange vibration on shore. The sand begins to sink in on itself and form funnels. Humongous crabs crawl out. There are hundreds, thousands of them, and they're all heading for the water. Panic strikes, and people scream and run inland. While they flee, some people video the madness. It goes viral. But they're not alone. People everywhere are coming face to face with these monsters. No one knows what's going on. Crabs dig burrows when they molt. Deep down in the sand, they're protected from predators and bad weather. This time, something weird happened. They hid way deeper than ever before, so they had more time to grow. For six months, they've been sitting and waiting for their new shell to grow. Now they're out, and they only want one thing – food. Most crabs eat fish, alive and not, snails, and even other crabs – anything that gets in their way. They love fights and are naturally aggressive. But now that they're massive, small shellfish and algae are just not enough. A big fish would be delicious, but they can't catch them because crabs don't swim well. But on land, they move pretty quickly. The big fish are safe, but what about the rest of us? One day later, thousands of eyes come out of the water, like a thousand submarine periscopes. Crabs have excellent vision, and they can spot a potential meal from far away. Their eyes can distinguish between houses and moving objects, cars, and people. 
thousands of pairs of sharp, snapping claws emerge from the water and head for the city. There's chaos on the street. Crabs are running around, cutting down electric poles, overturning cars, and smashing glass. Everyone rushes off the street and heads for a narrow alley. A crab cuts off their escape. It eyes its prey, but it looks like the alley's too narrow. The people are safe. Not. The crab turns sideways and squeezes into the alley. It's hungry, and it starts snapping its claws. They're blocked in on all sides. The crabs are everywhere. The only way is up. People scramble up the fire escape to the roof. The crabs try to follow, but everything they grab onto, trees, even the metal fire escape, crushes under their enormous weight. The crabs are left looking up, hungry. Up on the roof, people watch as crabs destroy their city. Humans hunker down in their homes, but that doesn't stop the crabs. They break down doors and walls. Everyone gathers on the roofs, looking up to the sky for help. Helicopters finally arrive and evacuate the city. Huge crabs bring huge problems to Christmas Island. It's in the waters between Indonesia and Australia. The islanders pack their bags, drive to the pier, and leave the island. They're pretty scared, but also a bit confused. Once the last human's gone, the island gets quiet. But there still aren't any crabs. What's going on? The sky is overcast, and it starts to rain heavily. As soon as the first drop hits the ground, a tiny vibration shoots across the land. The rainforest in the middle of the island starts to change shape. Trees fall, and the earth shakes. But this is not an earthquake. It's worse. Giant red crabs poke their heads out. Not hundreds, not thousands, but tens of millions. These crabs migrate every year from the rainforest to the coast of the Indian Ocean to breed. Even at normal size, the crabs cover the roads. They look like a long red river. The migration lasts about three weeks. But now that these crabs are so big, They cover almost half the island. They demolish trees, cars, houses, everything in their path. Then, just like that, they disappear into the Indian Ocean. It looks like a typhoon swept over the whole island. Crab hunters appear all over the world. They trap the monsters and tame them. But no, people don't use crabs as pets. They sit on them and joust. In the Middle Ages, two knights with spears would ride on horseback and charge at each other. Now there are crab tournaments. Supersized crabs instead of horses, and claws instead of spears. The strongest crabs live on the tropical islands in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Coconut crabs. They don't need much water, they mostly live in forests, and their claws are the strongest of any crab. The only thing that comes close is the awesome power of an alligator bite. Try to split a coconut. You'll need a hammer, maybe some other tools. These crabs do it with their claws, and that's when they were regular size. Now they can chop a palm tree in two without breaking a sweat. But there is some good news out there. Japan is home to some useful crabs, spider crabs, the largest in the world. Their normal size is about 12 feet from claw to claw, about the length of a car. Their long legs make them look like spiders. There's not a lot of animals out there who would want to go up against such a large crab. These new spider crabs are five stories tall, and they take steps 10 feet long. The really cool thing is that these crabs can live up to 100 years. Even better, they're not aggressive. These big, friendly giants mostly eat plants, and they're tame to ride. Kind of like riding an epic-sized camel. Now that crabs don't have any competitors or enemies, their population starts to explode. They take over the planet. Humans are helpless. Their strong shells protect them from danger, and their sharp claws mean business. Cities put up gargantuan walls to protect themselves, and scientists try desperately to figure out a solution. Crabs don't only live near the shore. They live in forests, rivers, lakes, almost anywhere there's moisture. It's hard enough to fend off one giant crab, let alone hundreds. People start to head for the safety of large, dry deserts. It's hard to survive. Humans need food and water, just like the huge crabs. Crabs are taking over everything. Humans don't have the resources to stop them. 
It seems like all hopes lost. But just then, they remember. There's no need for scientists and inventors. There's an old fisherman's trick that might just be the key to controlling the crabs. It's called a crab's bucket, or crab trap. If you put a bunch of crabs into one bucket, they won't be able to get out. By instinct, they start to interfere with each other. One crab climbs up, but the other crabs grab it and pull it back down. Doesn't have to be a bucket. The traps can be all kinds of shapes. Funnel, cube, even pyramid shape. And that's what people decided to do. They dig deep ditches all over the world and line them with concrete so that the monster crabs can't dig their way out. Then they lure the crabs in with some tasty fish and seaweed. Once the crabs go in, they're trapped for good. Victory! And soon, down at supermarkets all over the world, there's a special sale on fresh crab. Hey, don't forget the seafood sauce. Whale watching is a popular bucket list item. But getting too close to these gorgeous sea creatures isn't the best idea, especially if you don't want to kick the bucket too early. Whales are generally curious and friendly giants, but they can be unpredictable when you cross their personal borders. First of all, they are huge, and one wrong move on their side could flip over your boat or seriously hurt you. Second, they are wild animals, and like any other wild animals, they can carry certain infections they could transfer to you if you get into direct contact. Plus, they have strong parental instincts. So if you approach their young by accident, they might think you want to take them away and will act accordingly. It is only safe to observe whales from the sea when you're accompanied by an experienced expert, both for your own good and for the good of the whale. Now, sometimes whales and dolphins strand themselves on the shore for reasons scientists still can't explain. Quite recently, over 200 whales have been found on a remote beach in Tasmania, Australia. A rescue team rushed to the location to save the whales, half of which were still alive. The rescue operation was really complex due to the remote location. The locals were trying to help the whales, covering them with blankets and pouring buckets of water on them to keep them alive. This mutual effort of regular people and professional rescuers helped save around 100 whales. As to why this happened, one theory says the stranded whales might have had a leader who had some problems with orientation and took the whole pod to the wrong place. The Australian box jellyfish looks just like any other jellyfish you've probably met in the sea. But don't let these creatures deceive you. They're considered the most venomous marine animals. Box jellyfish got its name because it does look a lot like a box, unlike other kinds of jellyfish that float with the current rather than swim. This creature can reach a decent speed and choose its own direction. And here comes the scariest part. It has tentacles covered with tiny darts loaded with poison. Mm. People and animals that get unlucky enough to have a rendezvous with those tentacles face some pretty scary and sometimes even fatal consequences in just a matter of minutes. Before you decide to cancel your vacation by the ocean, you should know that only a few out of the 50 species of box jellyfish have venom that is lethal to humans. Ooh. There are some not-so-dangerous species living in warm coastal waters worldwide, and the lethal ones reside in the Indo-Pacific region and northern Australia. Good day, mate! Hmm? A blue-ringed octopus likes to pretend its only outstanding feature is the psychedelic color, but it can quickly and easily take away your life. This cute-looking sea monster likes to spend its time in the soft, sandy bottom or shallow tide pools and coral reefs. It normally hides in underwater crevices among shells or debris. If you somehow manage to find and disturb it there, the octopus will show you its signature blue rings as a warning signal. And if you don't get the hint, it will introduce you to its other signature feature, a venom a thousand times more powerful than cyanide. One octopus has enough of it to do away with 26 people within minutes. This venom is more toxic than that of land mammals. The octopus normally uses it to hunt crabs, shrimp, and small fish by pecking them with its beak and paralyzing them. The same can happen to a human victim. You'll unlikely even feel the bite until it's too late. The good news is that there have been no known cases of such incidents since the 1960s. 
If you don't disturb the blue ring octopus, it will never attack you first. If you enjoy picking shells on the beach, make sure the ones you collect don't belong to a cone snail. It's nothing like its relatives living on land and eating fresh leaves and bark. There are over 500 species of this venomous sea creature, and a few that can really hurt you. These little snails are extremely vicious, just like Jimmy from third grade. They inject their venom through a harpoon-like tooth. The consequences of this injection can be quite terrible for you. Now, are you afraid of snakes? Well, I have some bad news for you. You can't escape them even in the water. Certain kinds of these creatures have adapted to live both on land and in the sea, especially in the warm waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans. All the species we know so far are venomous, and sometimes an encounter with them can be super dangerous. The good news is that they only bite if you disturb them. So the safest way to go is in the opposite direction of these slithery sea creatures. Not only venomous sea creatures present a danger to you while you're in the water. Strong earthquakes sometimes cause the formation of massive ocean waves. If they head ashore, they hardly leave anything intact in their way. You know this dangerous sea phenomenon as a tsunami. There is also another type of this natural disaster called a meteo tsunami. They're caused by rapid storm systems and pressure changes above the open water. A powerful storm can generate a whole wall of water. Sometimes, this wall grows several feet high while it moves through a shallow continental shelf, inlets, or bays. If it gets strong enough, it can damage houses close to the water. It's really tricky to forecast or detect a meteo tsunami because it's nearly impossible to tell from a seismic one. It happens much more often than regular tsunamis, especially in the Great Lakes area. Now, the ocean can be dangerous to you, even if you're staying in what seems like safety on the shore. One such unpleasant surprise could be a sneaker wave moving your way. As you can guess from its name, waves like this sneak out on unsuspecting beachgoers. They look average, but turn out to be way bigger and more dangerous than you could imagine. Sneaker waves always appear without warning after smaller waves carry huge amounts of water, sand, and gravel. They're so powerful, they can carry swimmers further away into the ocean. They can swipe you off your feet and into the water when you're casually strolling on a jetty or the beach or on an outcropping nearby. Oregon State University researchers found that sneaker waves form in offshore storms that carry wind energy to the ocean surface. With all that energy, several waves unite and overlap into one beast that stands higher and goes further ashore than a regular wave. Another thing that makes them more dangerous is that they're hard to predict. The logic of regular wave formation doesn't work with them. Square waves, looking like a giant chessboard over the ocean, are the reason many people visit the Isle of Ré off the western coast of France. If you visit it, you'll notice plenty of signs warning you to stay away from the water once you notice the unusual pattern. The safest way to observe it is from high up places like nearby lighthouses. If you decide to stay in the water, the strong currents coming from two directions can literally sweep you off your feet. Generally, waves can travel many miles over the surface of the water, depending on local winds and weather. And even on days when the weather seems somewhat calm, storms located elsewhere can send in crashing waves that affect the surrounding calm waters. When waves travel onto the shores of distant lands, they're called swells. This is different from a wave that occurs from the local wind. When two different swells coming from opposite directions meet, it's known as a cross sea. This is what generates these square waves that you see near the Isle of Ray. The cross sea phenomenon can appear in different locations around the world. The Isle of Ray is one of them, thanks to specific wind and weather patterns that create the perfect storm, which makes this cross sea so beautiful and well recognizable. Well, wasn't that swell? Uh, swell? Eh, never mind. Lions, dogs, cats, all these mammals sleep in pretty comfortable positions. But not whales. They look like giant floating loaves of bread, which is a scene one diver accidentally came across in the Caribbean Sea. Six whales were just standing upright with their tails pointed down at a depth of about 65 feet below the surface. 
Scientists discovered that when sperm whales take a nap, they stay in this position for 10 to 15 minutes. They don't move or breathe. But these creatures spend only 7% of their time asleep, far less than other mammals. Usually, they either rest peacefully in the water or relax, slowly swimming next to other marine animals. When they're moving and sleeping at the same time, they're actually taking a nap. These animals can't go too deep and need to stay close to the surface. Great white sharks sleep and hunt at greater depths, which means one less thing to worry about when taking a quick nap. Plus, it gets pretty cold the deeper you go. And whales need warmer environments that can help them maintain the temperature of their large bodies. When alone, dolphins enter a stage of deep sleep. It usually happens at night and lasts for only a few hours at a time. While sleeping, the animal floats at the surface. It shuts down half of its brain, I can relate, together with the opposite eye. The other half is at a low alert level, awake and ready to react if some unwanted visitor comes closer. The part of the brain that is awake also sends signals when it's time to go up to the surface to take a breath of fresh air. Marine mammals have the blowhole. That's a flap of skin they can open and close whenever they want. People breathe automatically. Your body knows what it needs to do even when you're sleeping. But whales and dolphins have a voluntary breathing system. It means they need to consciously go to the surface to get some air. And one part of their brain needs to always be awake to inform the animal it's time to go up. Whales and dolphins can hold their breath way longer than other species. They also have a higher tolerance for carbon dioxide and can take in more air. Their red blood cells store more oxygen, too. Whales and dolphins' blood goes only to those body parts that really need oxygen. If a whale only uses its brain, heart, fins, and some other muscles needed for swimming at the moment, those will also be the only body parts that will get the oxygen. Digestion or other functions can wait. The ocean is not a place where you can relax and peacefully fall asleep. While sleeping, fish reduce their activity. Their metabolism becomes slow. Some of them keep floating in the same spot. Others find a safer place among corals or in the mud. Early in life, dolphins learn to make a unique whistle that helps others from their pod to identify them. That means these specific whistles are their names, and dolphins do respond to them. Clams have feet. It looks like a large tongue that sometimes protrudes from the shell, but that's actually the foot. And it's relatively long compared to the length of the animal. Clams use this limb to dig themselves in the sand. The blue whale is the largest living animal, and it's also larger than the majority of dinosaurs used to be. They can grow to more than 100 feet long and have a weight of almost 200 tons. That's like 50 adult elephants. A blue whale's tongue alone can weigh more than one elephant. Such a giant surely needs to eat a lot, half a million calories in just one mouthful. The blue whale's heart is the size of a small car and weighs 1,300 pounds. To move the blood through such a giant body, the heartbeats are so strong, you can hear them even from 2 miles away. The heart of a whale beats only 8 to 10 times per minute. The whale is one of the loudest creatures out there. Its call can go up to 180 decibels, which is as loud as a jet plane. Almost 95% of jellyfish's body is made of water. For comparison, the human body is 60% water. It's probably not a surprise since jellyfish don't have a heart, blood, eyes, or brain. The other 5% of their body weight is proteins, muscles, and nerve cells. Jellyfish have been around for more than 500 million years. This makes them older than dinosaurs. These creatures haven't changed much, and today's jellyfish are pretty much like their ancestors. These creatures live in the ocean, but in 1991, more than 2,000 jellyfish polyps were taken into space. Scientists wanted to see how they would react in the environment with no gravity. The jellyfish reproduced and created 60,000 new polyps. But unfortunately, those couldn't function normally after getting back to Earth. One species of jellyfish can literally live forever. As it grows older, the critter goes down to the seafloor to become a polyp again. And that polyp turns into a new jellyfish with the same genetics. Greenland sharks can live 500 years. This is an animal with almost the longest lifespan among vertebrates. 
Sperm whales are sociable creatures. They spend their life surrounded by their family. These animals support one another and have close friends they remember well, even if they don't see each other for a long time. Electric eels have small eyes that are not so effective in environments with no light, so they mostly rely on their electric organs. Those consist of 6,000 cells. Eels use them to stow power, similar to batteries. These creatures use electricity like bats use their radars or dolphins their sonar. An eel can also produce enough electricity to power a panel of light bulbs. There's a small tropical archer fish that can learn to recognize human faces. This fish has an interesting ability to spit small jets of water from its mouth. Researchers showed the fish the image of two different faces placed side by side. One was unknown and the other was familiar. The fish was supposed to spit water at the familiar one. The creature took the right guess more than 80% of the time. Every year in the winter, great white sharks that live along the California coastline disappear. It feels as if they take a vacation for 30 to 40 days. The animals go to a point halfway between Hawaii and Mexico. They might do it to get some food, relax, or hang out with their buddies from other areas. The spot is now called the Whale Shark Cafe. Some types of sharks, like makos, whale sharks, or white sharks, breathe in a very specific way. It requires them to swim all the time. They also need to move quickly and with their mouth open. This way, the oxygen can enter and reach their gills. Sea sponges are some of the most primitive animals. They're immobile, don't have a mouth, eyes, bones, brain, heart, lungs, or any other organ whatsoever. And still, they're alive. There's such a thing as a sea unicorn. That's an animal called the narwhal. Its horn is actually a tooth that can grow up to 10 feet long. Manatees, also known as sea cows, are distant relatives of elephants. Their weight can go up to 1,000 pounds. These creatures are vegetarian and need to eat around 10% of their total weight on a daily basis. That's lots of sea salad. In some cases, manatees share space with alligators, but they get along pretty well. You can even find a photo from Florida where an alligator rides a manatee's back. Frogfish have special fins that help these creatures walk along the sand. They're very useful in shallow waters. A ghost pipefish is hard to see, but once you spot it, you're bound to get really surprised. Its head makes up over 40% of its body. Crabs don't feel like wasting time on such formalities as putting foods in their mouth. That's why they taste it with their feet, which is where their taste buds are. Marine iguanas are the only lizards on our planet that like spending time in the ocean, even though they mainly live on land. They're herbivores that feed in shallow waters and swim like snakes. Iguanas use their long claws to hold on to the bottom when they need to graze. Green turtles can cross over 1,400 miles when migrating. They try to find the perfect spot to lay their eggs. Penguins sort of fly when they're underwater, reaching a speed of 25 miles per hour. More than 5 million years ago, I've heard, I wasn't around then, deep sea worms and humans had a common ancestor. So we still share 70% of our genes with these creatures, and with sea stars, squid, and octopuses. The ocean covers over 70% of our planet, and over 80% of it is unexplored. More than 1 million species live there. But there are not only animals. 3 million shipwrecks are lying all over the ocean floor, hiding mysterious stories. Many of them are yet to be discovered. There aren't many things great white sharks are afraid of. It goes the other way. Everyone's afraid of them. These toothy creatures are pretty much at the top of the food chain. At least until there comes a mysterious fellow that strikes fear into their bones. It may sound like it could be Kraken or some other mythical monster. Or maybe Megalodon, a massive terror that used to wander oceans. 20 years ago, scientists from Australia studied great white sharks. They put a tracker on a great white to see where it was going. About four months later, they found the tracker washed up on a beach. The shark was nowhere near that. Something really big must have grabbed it. 
A tracker was actually like a black box that kept track of some data from the shark while it was still attached to it. Researchers checked it to see what exactly happened. They realized that the shark had just been swimming around as it would normally do, but all of a sudden it changed direction. It started going down deeper and deeper into the darkness of the ocean. It came all the way down to 1,900 feet. The weird thing is, is that it's nearly 1,000 feet deeper than great white sharks tend to go. The tag data showed that the temperature went up to almost 30 degrees. It's shocking considering how cold the ocean becomes the deeper you go. So what most likely happened is that the great white shark ended up in the warm belly of some mysterious creature. It was probably way faster and bigger too. And the great white shark they tracked wasn't a small animal either. It was nine feet long and it has almost a ton of muscles, which means it wasn't such an easy catch. But one creature had overpowered the great white, maybe even without too much effort, and dragged it into the depths. It's fascinating how it all happened in a vast undersea zone that goes deep up to three miles. Its depth is more than double that of the Grand Canyon, and there are lots of nutrients and natural gases coming from the Earth's crust. They attract many different life forms to the seabed. It's like a buffet for hungry predators, so they like to visit down there from time to time. Imagine many of them fighting over the last meal on the buffet. Whoa, wouldn't like to be in their way. Some researchers actually reported that they discovered dusky sharks and killer whales in the zone where our great white was dragged. However, this is still a bit weird since they don't usually swim at such depths. Dusky sharks mostly don't grow bigger than great whites, so it's not likely that one of these could take such a strong predator down into depths so easily. It's a bit different with killer whales though, they can grow more than 30 feet, so they could take great whites without bigger struggles. I mean, they are their only natural predators. Also, they're quick enough to get them, so this would kind of be an obvious answer. Or. Do you remember how we said a great white got dragged at the depths of 1,900 feet? Yeah, killer whales don't go down there. They tend to catch their prey on the surface. Fun thought for the next time you're taking a nice relaxing swim in the ocean, huh? Also, the internal temperature of orcas is similar to humans, about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And the tag attached to the great white shark only showed 78 degrees Fahrenheit. The giant squid could be an option too when you think about it. We don't know that much about them because they live very deep in the ocean, so it's hard to study them. They live at a depth between 1,000 and 2,000 feet. The biggest one ever found was 43 feet long and a weight of nearly a ton. Nothing big, only several times the weight and height of the average man. Plus, they have power tentacles that can get a great white relatively easily. It can grab its prey even if it's 33 feet away. They usually go after shrimp and smaller fish. But in 2020, there was a cage with a shark that had large tentacle marks on its body, which means even sharks aren't off the table. Giant squids are animals that go to the surface during the night to catch their prey. They sleep during the day, so it could go up to the surface, grab a shark with its powerful tentacles and go down. But still, temperature changes in the shark's body means it ended up in the stomach of some warm-blooded animal. Giant squids are cold-blooded. It's good to know it wasn't a giant squid. It would give me a whole new perspective on taking a casual swim during my summer vacation, I'm telling you. It seems like the first ideas were all focused on some other scary deep-sea creatures. The last thing anyone could assume was, okay, maybe it was just another great white, only way bigger and by that, scarier. And that was exactly the case, a 16 foot long cannibal great white. It's normal among their species to eat one another from an early age. By the way, some other animals would eat some of their own species too. For example, Komodo dragons, African lions, leopards, and so on. This very great white weighed more than two tons, so no wonder it could grab this tiny fella the scientists tracked from the darkness and drag it to the depths. Or maybe it was the Megalodon after all, finally revealing itself from the mystery of dark ocean depths. 
No, no, stop it. I was just kidding. Okay, maybe we haven't found Meg yet, but the ocean hides some really crazy things. Not always scary, sometimes really beautiful. Like this mysterious glow that scientists captured in the water some years ago. They realized the glow was coming from bioluminescent bacteria. Although they're not sure why bacteria gathered in such large numbers in the first place, they still got to enjoy a milky phenomenon seen from miles away. Then again, there's an immortal jellyfish. It can get to a certain stage of life and then revert back to its polyp stage when it's very hungry or in danger. It's like its body cells just get to some point where it gets too hard and then the jelly presses the reset button and goes all over again. That's better than Benjamin Button. There's also this flowing river located at the bottom of the Black Sea. If it was on land, we'd be talking about the sixth biggest river in the world, considering the volume of water that flows through it. And the trip there would be really nice, considering you'd see trees, interesting surroundings, and even waterfalls. And it's not just something you can see below the surface of the ocean. It's about things you hear too. Like mysterious sounds scientists recorded in 1997 in the South Pacific. They named it Bloop. Many people started sharing stories that it could be some scary underwater monster lurking in the dark waters. But later, it turned out to be just an unusual noise of icebergs breaking off glaciers. The ocean hides some mysterious things no one even knows where they came from. Like when in 2011, explorers stumbled upon oval-shaped objects at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. It was like something you'd see in Star Wars, which is why many thought it was a spaceship that somehow ended up at the bottom of the ocean. Or parts of an asteroid that hit Earth long ago. One of the theories was that these objects were a human product that could date all the way back to Atlantis which would be really cool. But another more plausible theory is that it was a specific type of rock that formed in a glacial basin during the last ice age many thousands of years ago. If you could dive right into the mysterious darkness of the ocean depths, who knows what you'd come upon? Legends that are hundreds of years old mention some giant sea monsters hiding deep down below the ocean waves, like the Kraken the Loch Ness Monster, the Hydra, Leviathan, and so many more. Okay, no one has ever seen such monsters, but there are still weird and unusually big sea spiders, squid, worms, and many other animals that grew way more than we'd expected. Take a look at the colossal squid from sub-Antarctic waters. It's around 14 times longer than the arrow squid that lives near New Zealand. And deep down in the Pacific Ocean, there's a sea sponge as big as a minivan. Oceans contain about 96.5% of all water on our planet. Up to 80% of all life on Earth we've discovered is under the oceanic waves. We haven't explored, mapped, or even seen more than 80% of the ocean. In fact, We've mapped Mars better than we have the ocean bottom. The pressure down there is insane, and it would make you feel like you're holding up almost 50 jumbo jets, and temperatures at such depths are extremely low. Conditions deep below the oceanic surface are harsh, so creatures that live there need to adjust. That's why many of them grew very, very big to survive. Creatures that live in cold, dark depths are so big because of a phenomenon called deep sea gigantism. The deeper you go below the oceanic surface, the less sunlight there is. That's why the temperatures drastically fall. The result of this is increased cell size and longer life of creatures. Also, these creatures don't have as much oxygen as the marine animals that live in shallower parts. And their food sources are minimal. Much of the food they get comes from shallower waters, and only a little bit trickles down to the deeper parts. And when there's not enough food, being large is an advantage. 
larger creatures can move farther and faster to find something to eat. Their metabolism works slower. They don't digest the food that fast, so they can store food and conserve energy for hard times when they can't find anything to eat. They don't need to regulate their body temperature either, which also helps them save some energy, which they can then transfer to other body processes. They mature more slowly and later than those living in shallow waters. The majority of fish species that dwell in deep waters live 30 years or even more. Orange roughy fish, on the other hand, live up to 150 years. This fella grows 24 feet in length and weighs up to 1.5 tons. But it grows to be so big for centuries. They start looking for partners when they're 150 years old. And they can also live this long because there are not so many predators at such depths. Also, there are no humans or other things that can disturb them or endanger their existence. At such depths, the environment is pretty stable. So many animals there are like living fossils because they probably haven't changed in millions of years. The first 650 feet of the ocean's depth are considered to be the open ocean. The majority of the marine life we've discovered lives there, since that's the area the sun can still reach. And then, as you continue going deeper, you reach the twilight zone. It seems like nothing lives there. But at about 820 feet, you see a small oasis of ancient life blooming. For example, there are sea lilies, animals that have been living at such depths unchanged for millions of years. Coelacanths, another living fossil, have been living in the ocean for more than 360 million years. Hagfish haven't changed in a very long time either, for over 300 million years. This creature lives at depths of 5,500 feet. They evolved before the rest of the vertebrates, which is why this is the only living animal without jaws or a spine, even though it still has a skull. Deep sea creatures can't survive in shallow waters. They've evolved to live in depths under bigger hydrostatic pressure. Humans and other organisms that have internal spaces filled with gas would end up crushed if we could go to such depths. That's why deep sea divers always need to wear special dive suits designed for surroundings with higher pressure, even though they're not going that deep to the areas where these giants live. But near Antarctica, you can see gigantism way closer to the surface, like giant sponges, sea slugs, sea spiders the size of a dinner plate, worms, and even some enormous single-celled organisms. They all tend to chill in shallower waters. Scientists are not sure why exactly, but they think it could have something to do with oxygen. Giant species use just a little oxygen, and the waters around Antarctica are pretty rich in it which means there's hardly any limit to these animals growing bigger and bigger. Back to deep sea creatures. As mentioned, they had to adjust to strong pressure, so they almost don't have any air gaps in their body at all. They're mostly water-based, and since water is incompressible, which means it's not something you can compress, it helps them stay unaffected at such high pressure. But because of all that, if they were to go up towards the surface, they'd probably swell up, maybe even explode. Just look at the blobfish, the one that takes the title of the ugliest animal in the world. It looks normal deep down below the surface, where its natural habitat is. But when it gets up to the surface, where the pressure is 120 times lower, it changes its shape. The blobfish doesn't have a skeleton or muscles, so without high deep sea pressure, it ends up being all floppy and saggy. The dark oceanic depths are not just scary to watch, but to listen to as well. In 1997, scientists were trying to find underwater volcanoes located off the South American coast. During their travels, they recorded one of the loudest noises ever registered. It was pretty weird too. It was so loud, even sensors from more than 3,000 miles away managed to pick it up. They later called it the bloop. It took them 15 years to conclude the sound came from an ice quake. That's when seismic activity breaks frozen ground. Water at the bottom of the ocean is not always extremely cold. 
there are hydrothermal vents on the seafloor, and the water that comes out of them can be up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Powerful pressure, yep, the same one that would crush you, is something that doesn't allow the water to boil. There are hundreds of animal species that live near deep sea hydrothermal vents. Some of them, such as tube worms, are not like anything we've seen before. These worms absorb chemicals from vent fluids. That's how they feed bacteria that live in them. And in return, those bacteria give them the carbon the tube worms need to survive. Two thirds of all of the coral species scientists discovered live in dark, deep, and extremely cold parts of the ocean. Some even live in parts that are three miles deep. They can survive at low temperatures, such as 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of these cold water corals are more than 8,000 years old. They form amazing structures that can rise up to 115 feet tall. The deep is not just a mysterious world of unusual creatures. The landscape under the oceanic surface is magnificent too. The canyons hiding there make even the Grand Canyon seem small. For instance, check out the one located in the Bering Sea, the Zhem Chug Canyon. Its vertical relief is more than 8,500 feet deep. That's huge. The largest ocean waves are not the ones you can see from the shoreline. They occur under the surface, and they're called internal waves. They take place between two water masses that have different densities. They travel at speeds of thousands of miles per hour and can be 650 feet tall. <laughs> 